know, if you have, uh, let's do that, that will help you do this right here. You have negative square root of 3 over 2, and you want the reciprocal, you're going to have 1 over negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay. Well, all that means we're taking a, a function, I can look at 1 as actually being 1 over 1. And so if I'm dividing by a fraction, uh, then all that means is I'm going to have 1 over 1 and then times the, the reciprocal of the denominator. So that's where that comes from. It, that's the reason that we're taking, uh, we're, we're basically flipping the numerator and denominator there. I end up with just negative 2 over square root of 3 or negative 2 square root of 3 over 3 if we rationalize it. That's all, that's all we're really doing if I'm taking the reciprocal of something is split the numerator and the denominator here. So, so um, the, the negative, the second one up right there, is that so you would do the square root of 3 square root of 3 and then you have 2 square root of 3 over 6 or 3? Over 3, yeah. Okay. Any uh, specific problems on the homework have questions about for anybody? Turn this up just in case that's not. Uh, I think I had 16. 16? I think that was the one I asked you about. So. Oh, okay. Any others that ah uh, today uh, we're gonna start chapter two and a little bit wow why does that on down there not really sure All right. Don't know what that was, but we're back. So starting chapter two, um, we'll talk about acute angles and right triangles. We'll talk about how uh, the trig functions are going to be represented <laughs> by using some right triangles and, and how we'll uh, find the ratios for them given particular sides of right triangles. So basically a different way of finding the values of trig functions than we were already doing, we'll still get the same ratios, we'll just have a different way of going about it. So, um, very first section here is just trigonometric <coughs> functions of acute angles. We're gonna talk about the right triangle-based definitions of the trig functions. Um, we'll talk about co-functions, so how sines related to cosine and secants related to cosecant, tangent to cotangent, and then how the values of those functions change as we change the angle and then the last thing we'll talk about are trig functions of special angles, which were def or the values of special angles, which are going to come up quite a bit. So 
First things first, the right triangle based definitions of trig functions. All right. If I'm going to, let's say, look at an angle A the same way that we've been essentially looking at this for the entire time, except make this an entire triangle itself. So I still have an X coordinate is this side along the X axis. And that's just a, a distance of X that we have here. I still have a Y coordinate that gives me the distance that it goes up. That is just this side of the triangle. I know because this is just horizontal, X is horizontal and Y is vertical. That's a 90 degree angle between them. And then this remaining part, the part that goes from A up to that point B or the point X, Y has a distance of R. All right, we haven't changed anything there. Those are still the same values that we were using before. But if I look again at this as being an actual triangle instead of just an X and a Y value and an R value, I can say that the value for sine of A, this angle right here that starts at the vertex is the value of, <clears throat> since it's Y over R, the opposite side of the triangle. So the side that is opposite the angle A over the hypotenuse of the triangle over R in that case. Right, I can say that the value of cosine, since I know it's X over R, is the side that's adjacent to this angle A over the hypotenuse. Right, tangent, since that's Y over X, is the side opposite that angle over the side that's adjacent to that angle. All right, and then cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, secant's the reciprocal of cosine, cotangent's the reciprocal of tangent. Uh, we can get all that just by flipping those. Only really need to understand the, the first three, the main three there. All right, so just a different way of, of looking at it and understanding it. And if you've ever seen this before, let's hope this doesn't mess up. The video again. If you've seen this before, what you'll have heard heard it represented by is Sokotoa, all right? Sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Just an easy way for us to remember that cosine is the adjacent side. over the hypotenuse. And then tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side. All right, and again, if we know the reciprocal identities, you know, cosecant's the reciprocal of sine, secant's the reciprocal of cosine, um, and cotangent's the reciprocal of tangent, we, we only need these three really to understand, <clears throat> and then we can use those. All right, but that's the, the mnemonic that kind of helps us out with that. So anytime we're gonna do that, we can remember that relationship and we'll be able to figure out the trig values. And always remember when we talk about this, we're saying the, the side opposite, the side adjacent and the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse doesn't change. The hypotenuse, even though it is technically adjacent to this angle, the hypotenuse is always just the hypotenuse. Make sure we're talking about the angle A in this case, when we say, all right, the side opposite it is Y, the side adjacent to it, the side right next to it is X in that case. All right. Those are the relationships that we'll have. Again, just right triangle base. It's not changing anything. They still stand for the same thing. Y over X, X over R, Y over R, um, all of that kind of stuff. Just a different way of remembering it. So let's say, oh, one other very, very important thing to say about this is they are right triangle based definitions. This is super important. None of this applies if we're not talking about a right triangle. All right, one of those angles is gonna have to be 90 degrees. And that means we know which one is the hypotenuse. It's the one opposite 
that side. Whatever, wherever our right angle is, the hypotenuse is the one that's opposite that one. All right, but let's say I want to find sine, cosine, and tangent of angle, or the values of angles A and angles B in this right triangle. I have a hypotenuse uh, that measures 25, a side AC that measures 24, and a side BC that measures 7. So if I want to find, let's say, sine, cosine, and tangent for A, what is sine of A going to be equal to? Yeah, 7 over 25. A is this angle, so the side opposite is equal to 7, and then the hypotenuse is just equal to 25, so 7 over 25. Cosine of A? Yeah, adjacent side to it is 24, hypotenuse is 25, so 24 over 25. And then tangent of A? 7 over 24, opposite over adjacent. Simple enough, it didn't ask in this case, but what is cotangent of A? 24 over 7, because it's just the reciprocal of tangent. What is secant of A? 25 over 24 secants, the reciprocal of cosine, and then cosecant of A, 25 over 7, reciprocal of, of sine. So as long as I know these three and the relationships for sine, cosine, tangent, the other ones, since they're reciprocals, easy enough to find just by taking the reciprocal of each one of those. All right. What about angle B? What's sine of B in this case? Same triangle. What's sine of B? Yeah, 24 over 25. So now that I'm looking at that angle up there, the side opposite that angle is the side that measures 24. Hypotenuse is still the same, so 24 over 25. And then the side adjacent to it now, when I'm looking for cosine of B, is 7. So 7 over 25 for cosine of B. And then tangent of B, 24 over 7. Cosecant, secant, and, tan and cotangent, just the reciprocals of each of those respectively. All right, so opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent for sine, cosine, tangent, respectively. Make sure it's a right triangle. There's a lot of stuff that is very useful for right triangles that does not apply anywhere else for any other triangles. So it's very useful, but also kind of limited. Make sure we understand that. All right. Well, there's any questions on that, the right triangle relationship for the trig values. Next thing from this section talks about co-functions and the co-function identities. Really, it's talking about how each of the co-functions is going to relate to the other, the non-co part of the function. But it means that sine of some angle A is just equal to cosine of 90 degrees minus A, and vice versa, cosine of A is equal to sine, 90 degrees minus A. Tangent of A is equal to cotangent of 90 minus A. All right, and cotangent is tangent of 90 minus A. Right, so the co-functions correspond to each other. Same goes for secant. Secant of A is cosecant of 90 degrees minus A. Cosecant of A is secant of 90 degrees minus A. All right. Um, something to understand with this. I mean, we can always write them in this way, but it also does mean if I have some equation that I'm setting up like this, if I have the two co-functions, say I have secant of A and cosecant of B, I know that A plus B have to add up to 90 degrees, all right? That's just what we're going to have if they're co-functions, right? If they were the same function, change all that, but I know that whatever I'm taking the co-functions up, they're all they're on opposite sides of that. I know that co-function angles, whatever I'm taking secant of and cosecant of, if that were the case, 
have to add up to 90, or whatever I'm taking sine of and cosine of have to add up to 90. Right, so important, a different way of looking at it, but explaining the same thing. All right, so having said that, let's say I want to write each of these functions in terms of its co-function. So I have cosine of 52 degrees. In terms of its co-function, which in this case is what? Sine of 38. Yeah, sine, I'm just going to have sine of 90 minus 52, so sine of 38 degrees. All right, simple enough. If I know one, um, I can find the co-function and give it an equivalent value there. Tangent of 71 degrees in terms of its co-function. Okay. I know it's going to be cotangent 90 minus 71, so cotangent of 19 degrees. And then secant of 24 degrees, its co-function is going to be what? Six. Cosecant of 90 minus 24, cosecant of 66 degrees. Right. It's one way for us to be able to rewrite this, and this can help us solve equations too. If I have, um, if I have things with, say, tangent and cosine, something like that, or sorry, tangent and sine, I need to rewrite. You know, tangent turns to cotangent, so I can relate it to cosecant, whatever, and then relate it to sine using our Pythagorean identities and reciprocal identities. We can do that. I can always rewrite these. Um, even if we don't know the actual values, I could always just, you know, rewrite them as 90 minus an angle A or 90 minus theta, anything like that. All right. Again, note here, because this is what the next examples are going to use. Note that if I have the two co-functions, the angles that are inside each one add up to 90 degrees, meaning they are what? Just to bring this back to the first day or second day or whatever. Yeah, complementary angles. Right. Let's say I want to find a solution for the following equation, assume all the angles are acute angles because we could actually have multiple solutions for this. Um, but I have cosine of theta plus four degrees equal to sine of three theta plus two degrees. Coming back to the fact that we have like that the angles inside those co-functions should be complementary makes this a little bit easier. There are a couple of different ways we can do this. We're gonna end up with the same thing no matter what. All right, um, in fact, I'll write out the first way just to show it. So let's say First way that we could do this, just using those those very basic definitions of the co-functions, would be to say, all right, I'm going to have to be able to set things equal to each other. So if I have cosine of theta plus four degrees equal to sine of three theta plus two degrees, I need to either write them both in terms of sine or both in terms of cosine, because if I know that cosine of a is equal to cosine of b, a has to be equal to b. All right. So I could do it this way and rewrite that sine term in terms of its, cos of, of its co-function, in this case, cosine. If I have sine of three theta plus two degrees, then I'd have cosine of 90 degrees minus, just have to make sure that I'm subtracting everything from that. So 90 minus three theta plus two degrees. And then I know since you know they're both cosine, I can just set theta plus four degrees equal to 90 minus three theta plus two degrees and then solve from there, right? And again, I, I wrote that out there because that by the definitions that we had, that is 
essentially what we're doing. But an easier way of looking at this, because this is always going to come out, notice I can just add. Can we send over to the, uh, the last few questions on the previous homework? Um, there was some kind of something like this. There might have been one up. or two that you could do this on, a, on the previous homework. Okay. Yeah. But notice I can just add this entire term right here, the three theta plus two to both sides, and I'm going to get theta plus four degrees plus three theta plus two degrees. equal to 90 degrees. And so I can actually start with that. I don't necessarily have to go through this entire co-function um, idea as, as we're talking about it there. This is always going to be the case. If I have that cosine uh, of A is equal to sine of B, I know that A and B are complementary angles. We've already established that. In fact, that's what we just wrote up there. So. If I know that they're co-functions, they have to sum up to 90 degrees, I can just start with that point. I don't have to go through those other steps and show this. I know that theta plus four degrees plus three theta plus two degrees has to be equal to 90 degrees. And we can just start with that. I know they have to be complementary angles there. All right, and then just solve for theta from there. So combine like terms, four theta plus six degrees equal to 90 degrees, subtract six, degrees from both sides. So four theta is equal to 84. And then theta must be equal to 21 degrees. So again, that this, this type of relationship right here, this very first step comes from, you know, that the exact definition of the co-functions that we had just a second ago. But we can go ahead and just use this as a first step instead of having to go through the rest of it. Assuming we have very important here, assuming we have co-functions on either side there. All right. 21 degrees, and that's all we were asked to find was they, it says it's acute, make sure it's an acute angle that we find there. Um, and not anything that's coterminal with that, like plus 360. Same idea, if I have two different co-functions, if I have tangent of two theta minus 18 degrees equal to cotangent of theta plus 18 degrees, I know they're co-functions. I could say tangent of the first one's equal to tangent of 90 degrees minus that second angle and go through all of that. Or I could start in the same way that we started that last one by saying that since tangent and cotangent um, are co-functions, the angles inside each of them have to sum up to 90 degrees. And therefore that means two theta minus 18 degrees plus theta plus 18 degrees is equal to 90 degrees. All right, combine like terms there, minus 18 plus 18, those are gonna cancel out. I just have three theta so equal to 90 degrees. Different yeah, basically this, the exact same idea as what we did before, just two different co-functions in this case. So and that would what's work. important is, is making sure that they are co-functions, tangent and cotangent, or like in the previous one, it's cosine and sine, or if I have secant and cosecant. It wouldn't work if I had, you know, tangent and cosecant. That's not going to work. Have to but, one. but yeah, we'd have to do something else with that. Three theta is equal to 90, theta is equal to 30 degrees. Again, another acute angle, the only one that we're looking for. If you want to, for especially for both of these examples, you can go back and check, plug in 30 degrees for theta into this, and then plug into the calculator and see if tangent of, what, 60 minus 8, so tangent of 42 degrees is equal to cotangent of 48 degrees. Should give you the exact same answer. All right. Questions on co-functions and the relationship between the co-functions. All right, then talk a little bit about increasing or decreasing functions or how basically what we mean is as an angle increases, what's the, the relationship going to look like for the trig functions. So if we assume 
that I have an angle A. All right, I'm looking at it. It's a right triangle, kind of like we started with at the very beginning. If we're going to assume that R, the hypotenuse never changes its length. R is going to be the same no matter what. Then if A gets bigger, as I go from a very small angle to a bigger angle, as we get closer and closer to, you know, a 90 degree angle for A, not quite getting there because then we wouldn't have a triangle. But as I get closer and closer to that, if R stays the same, that means that that opposite side has to get bigger. Y is going to have to get bigger just because I'm, I have a, a larger angle there and, and R has stayed the same. And that also means that X has to get smaller. All right, if R is not going to change, then as I move here, I'm obviously going to have less X distance to get to the end. All right, so assuming <laughs> again, if the hypotenuse is fixed, as the angle A increases, then Y is going to increase, X is going to decrease. And so if we know those two things, based on the rest of it, um, sine of A, since sine of A is Y over R, well, if Y gets bigger and R stays the same, sine of A is gonna get bigger, all right? If the numerator gets bigger, the denominator stays the same, then the fraction gets bigger. All right, and if sine of A increases, then cosecant of A is going to do what? Its reciprocal will do what? Yeah, it'll be it'll decrease because it's going to be R over Y. So I have a fixed value, and I'm dividing by a bigger number. So if I divide by a bigger number, it's going to decrease. All right. In the same way, when we think about those ratios, cosine of A is x over r x is decreasing so cosine of a is going to decrease as the angle a gets bigger there all right and therefore secant is going to increase since it's the reciprocal tangent of a is y over x y gets bigger and x gets smaller obviously tangent is going to what top gets the top of a fraction gets bigger and the bottom of the fraction gets smaller what happens yeah, it's definitely going to increase it's going to increase a lot faster than sine does in fact all right and then obviously that means cotangent decreases because it's the opposite thing see so reciprocal there so that's what happens um, again <laughs> as that angle a increases these are going to apply when we think about these um, these six different things. Think about them in the first quadrant. Think about the angle in standard position in the first quadrant because we'll start looking at the different values and they'll change a little bit differently as we get to quadrant two and three and four. Uh, but understand at least the idea of what's going on, that R is always the same value. So we have to think what's going on with X and Y if we maintain that same uh, specific value for the hypotenuse. All right. So a couple of quick things with this. Um, determine whether each of the following statements is true. Sine of 21 degrees is greater than sine of 18 degrees. Yeah, it's going to be true. We know that as, um, again, at least from 0 to 90, the first quadrant, as the angle increases, as A got bigger, sine also got bigger. So if I have a bigger angle, 21 degrees, then sine of 21 should be greater than sine of 18 degrees. Right, so that one would be true. Part B, secant of 56 degrees is less than or equal to secant of 49 degrees. Well, I know based on this previous part, and I don't even have to necessarily think of this one, but I know that cosine is gonna decrease as the angle gets bigger. So secant is going to have to increase. So if I had secant of 56 degrees, that should be what compared to secant of 49 degrees? Should be what? Greater angle for secant should be? False. Should be bigger, yeah. So this is going to be false. Um, again, if R is fixed, 
then moving that angle, increasing the angle from 49 to 56 should give me a smaller X. That means secant should increase as we have there. And so secant of 56 degrees less than or equal to secant of 49 degrees is false. I, just a general idea, and this can help us at least thinking of, of what's supposed to happen in that area. You know, again, between zero and 90, we'll talk about the rest of it and next time, maybe, or maybe uh, Friday. Make sure, uh, you know, our answers make sense. If we're finding different answers, I'm like, ah, yeah, that one should be bigger. It makes sense that it's bigger than the one we had before because the angle is bigger. Um, just a good idea, a good quick way to check if we remember how these trig functions behave as an angle increases, right? Last thing to talk about today are gonna to be the special triangles and the trig values of special angles that we're gonna have. So we'll have two different triangles. It'll give us three different special angles, right? The first triangle, right triangle that we're gonna talk about is a 30-60 triangle, 30-60-90 triangle or a 30 degree, 60 degree right triangle, all right? So the way that we're gonna figure this out, let's say I start with just an equilateral triangle, it measures a length of two on every side, and if it's equilateral, that means all of the angles have to be the same, so 185 by three is 60 degrees. So every angle is 60, the length of every side is, is two. I'm going to just bisect this triangle draw a line straight down from that top angle to the opposite side. It's gonna create two right triangles here, all right? I'm gonna have 90 degree angles on either one of them. They're gonna be exactly the same triangle, just a slightly different orientation. But since I bisected that top angle, the angle on each of the top ones is going to be 30 degrees. And then since I also, by definition, bisected the side on the on the opposite of that angle each of those is now going to be equal to one since the the side was total equal to two before all right so this gives me a 30 again a 30 degree 60 degree right triangle here and there either one the only thing we don't know at this point is what is the length of that side that we just created for each of these triangles but since i already know the length of the hypotenuse is two there. The length of this side is one, and it's a right triangle. Pretty easy for us to figure out what X is gonna be equal to. So if I just look at one of these triangles, this is one, that's two, it's a right triangle. I can use what to figure out X? Yeah, I used the Pythagorean theorem. So one squared plus X squared has to be equal to two squared. So four minus one is three, x squared is equal to three, so x is just equal to, technically, most of the time when we're doing something like this, x should be equal to what? If I have x squared is equal to three. Mm -hmm. Or, remember, if I'm solving this equation, technically, I'd end up with a what? Square root of three or no. No. what else when I square it gives me three? I just want to make sure we're clear. I, we're not going to use the other answer on this one because we're just talking about a length of a of a of a side of a triangle. But if I'm just solving this equation x squared equals to something that means i have to have two solutions what plus are the two minus. solutions yeah or plus or minus square root of three mm. very important that is an equation it has two solutions x is equal to plus or minus square root of three very important to remember that that's true we're only going to use the positive value i just i'm looking for the length of this side of the triangle so i'm just going to use square root of three the positive value there don't forget if I'm solving an equation like that, there are two solutions and it's the positive and negative value of that. All right, but that gives me, again, we'll use the positive one. So to have one side, the short side length of this 30, 60, 90 triangles one, the long side 
the long leg is square root of three, and then the hypotenuse is two, all right? And that's always gonna be the case for any 30, 60, 90 triangle. So let's say I wanna find the six trig function values for a 60 degree angle. Given what this looks like, 30, 60, 90, always the hypotenuse will be 2, the side opposite the 90 degrees. Always the side opposite 30 is 1. Smaller angle is going to give me a smaller side length. Always the side opposite 60 degrees is going to be square root of 3. Middle side equals middle length. Or sorry, middle angle measure is equivalent, not equivalent, matches up to the middle length side. So what is sine of 60 degrees then? Square root of 3 over 2. Opposite over hypotenuse. What is cosine of 60 degrees? Now one half. Adjacent side over hypotenuse. What's tangent of 60 degrees? Yeah, it'll just be square root of three because opposite over adjacent square root of three over one. Right. All all sixty degree angles. This doesn't change anything. This is always the relationship between. Them. Right. What is cosecant of sixty degrees? Two square root of three over three. Yeah, I'll end up with. Now, all I'm going to do is take the reciprocal of that, so it's 2 over the square root of 3. If we rationalize it, 2 square root of 3 over 3. What is secant of 60 degrees? 2. Yeah, 2 over 1 is just equal to 2. What is cotangent of 60 degrees? Right, it'll be 1 over square root of 3. Rationalize that, I get square root of 3 over 3. All right, so all of those, they go in the opposite order that I just said them, but cotangent, secant, cosecant. Uh, just the reciprocals of the ones that we found using opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. All right, those are always the values for the trig functions at 60 degrees. What about sine of 30 degrees? So it's, yeah, it's still the same triangle. I'm just going to have a different opposite side. Since 30 degrees is over there, opposite side's 1, hypotenuse is 2. So sine of 30 is 1 half. Cosine of 30 degrees. Yeah, adjacent side, square root of 3 over the hypotenuse is 2. So square root of 3 over 2. Um, tangent of 30 degrees. Opposite side over the adjacent side, so 1 over square root of 3 or square root of 3 over 3. And then cosecant, secant, cotangent, reciprocal of each of those. All right, so 30, 60, 90 triangle. Most important thing to remember is just the values that they're going to take on. Hypotenuse is 2, short leg is 1, long leg is equal to square root of 3. If we know that and we know opposite over hypotenuse, all those relationships, then we can figure out all of the trig functions based on that, all right, for 30 degrees and 60 degrees. All right, the other special triangle that we'll have, and therefore the special trig values that we'll have, is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, all right, or a 45 degree, 45 degree right triangle. For this one, the most important thing to remember, since I'm going to have a 90 degree angle and two angles that are the same. That means the side lengths opposite each of those angles is going to have to be the same. The angle is the same. The side length will have to be the same. So if they're equal, I'm just going to say each leg of this right triangle is equal to one. And then that would mean that the hypotenuse has to be equal to what? I'm going to end up with I have 1 squared plus 1 squared equals r squared. Yeah, r squared is 2, so plus or minus square root of 2, but we're just talking about the length of the hypotenuse, so the positive square root of 2. All right. 
So that means any time we want to figure out the value of a trig function for 45 degrees, we'll use this 45, 45, 90 triangle. I'm gonna have each side length is one and the hypotenuse is the square root of two. And then I'm just gonna use the same relationships we had before. So sine of 45 degrees is, in fact, I use, use either one, doesn't really matter. Sine of 45 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, one over the square root of two or square root of two over two. And then cosine of 45 degrees is the same thing. I'm gonna have an adjacent side, one over the square root of two. So also square root of two over two. Sine and cosine at 45 degrees are equal to the same value. That actually makes sense when we talk about what we've seen with the co-functions already before and the fact that as angle A increases from zero to 90, sine got bigger and cosine got smaller well there has to be a spot right in between there where they're going to overlap so there is that point is right in the middle of 45 degrees and then tangent of 45 degrees would be what one what is cotangent of 45 degrees yeah also one because it's still just one over one what is secant of 45 degrees. Square root of two. Yeah, square root of two. This would be, again, one of those places I, I kind of mentioned this before um, with a couple other examples we did. Go back to this first part where we're looking at that and say, all right, I have one over the square root of two before I rationalize it. So the reciprocal of that is just square root of two over one or square root of two. Same goes for cosecant. Uh, 45 degrees, also square root of 2 over 1, right? And those are those values. So those are the special angles. Anytime I say something about special angles, generally that means I'm talking about a 30, a 45, or a 60 degree angle, all right? And then we do have, I mean, the, the quadrantal angles, 90, 180, all those, those are our special angles too, but they're not, they're, they're special in a different way. But 30, 45, 60, we know these exact values, all right? We'll always say square root of 2 instead of, you know, 1.41, whatever. Or square root of 3 over 2 instead of 1.7 divided by 2, whatever that is. All right, those we know the exact values of them. We'll always use the exact values for each of these. So what that's going to look like, <clears throat> again, you don't have to necessarily memorize this type of table. Uh, it's, it's not a bad idea to know this. But if we know where those come from, if I know the 30, 60, 90 triangle, the 45, 45, 90, I can find all of these just using those trig relationships, the right triangle relationships, the opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, all that kind of stuff. I can find those, but that's what the table of values is going to look like for each of them. All right. And we went through those like sine of 30 yeah, is one half. Sine of 45, square root of 2 over 2. Sine of 60, square root of 3 over 2. Notice the change, the way that they're kind of opposite for the co-functions. So cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. 45, square root of 2 over 2, where they are equal to each other. And then 60, 1 half in that case. All right. And then you can see the values for tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant, all of that. makes sense where those come from why we'll do that and again these are going to be the important angles these are ones to know for sure maybe again maybe not necessarily memorize the table itself but definitely understand the triangles where they come from the 45 45 90 the 30 60 90 triangle right here make sure we know these values and which one which side which angle, sorry, that they're opposite of, so that I can use the trig functions, the trig relationships that we had at the beginning to figure them out. All right. And if you do oops, memorize those, great. Um, there's only a few of them. Really, if we're talking about the actual values and how to find them, if you wanted to memorize them, really the only two you'd have to memorize are what? The only two columns in there that you'd have to memorize we want to do yeah be the first two 
I only need to know sine and cosine because I can get cosecant by taking the reciprocal of sine. I can get secant by taking the reciprocal of cosine. I can get tangent by doing what? Uh, even even if I'm saying if I just knew these two, it is yeah y over x. But if I know sine and cosine, I can get tangent by doing what? Tangent of, uh, yeah, tangent of theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. So I could just if I know that I want tangent of say 30 degrees, if I know sine of 30 is one half, cosine of 30 square root of three over two, I can just do one half divided by the square root of three over two and simplify that and get to the answer that we have there. So again, the most important to, to know if you're gonna memorize or, or know them offhand, sine and cosine, because we have identities to help us figure out either using the reciprocal identities for secant and cosecant, or using the, the quotient identities for tangent, cotangent. We can find those based off of that, all right? It's less to memorize or to know other than that in terms of the exact values. Questions on any of uh, 2.1, the right triangle relationships between trig functions. Please don't forget, as it says at the beginning there, they are right triangles. This doesn't apply to anything that is not a right triangle. We have to have a hypotenuse, and technically that, that definition only applies to right triangles. It's, that's the side opposite the right angle. Okay, 